Hi, my name is Adam. Welcome to the channel. And thanks for joining us today in video four of our mini series around RSPs and what to do with your RSP when you retire. Today, we're going to talk about should you pull money out of your RSP before retirement or maybe before your spouse retires, just looking at tax strategy. So we're going to dive into that and some numbers in this video today. If you haven't already joined our channel and subscribe, make sure to hit the subscribe button below. Uh, we release two videos every single week, uh, Tuesday, Fridays around financial retirement, estate and tax planning for Canadians. So make sure to join the channel, hit that notification bell to get a notification every single time we release new video, new content to help you retire in a better position. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about should you pull money out of your RSP before you retire or before your spouse retires? And we've done videos on the home buyer plan and a lifelong learning plan. We'll link those below. Um, we'll put the home buyer plan link above. We just did that video last week. Talks about you know pulling money out of your RSP to buy a home, to buy your first home, um, but you know that you have to pay back over time. So a little bit different. Today we wanna to talk about you know, maybe you've retired early, your spouse is still working. Um, you know, should you pull money out of your RSP actually before you retire? And there's a few things that to come into consideration for that. So the first one is if you pull money out uh, and you're in a low tax bracket, so maybe you've taken a year or two off, you know, maybe you're in your 40s or 30s, you've taken some time off, maybe you're on paternity leave or maternity leave and you have a low income in the year. That might be time to take money out. Maybe you've built up your RSP, you were working full time, uh, you've had children, you're at home now and you don't have an income. Now would be the time to look at redeeming some of your RSP money in a very low to little tax bracket. Um, great way to do it. Maybe you can take some of your RSP out, pay little to no tax, um, you know, and use some of that cash flow for other things, free up some cash flow that your spouse makes and he or she can make a RSP contribution to their RSP and get a nice tax break. So again, you're pulling money out of your RSP, your spouse is putting the same amount into their RSP and you know, again, you're taking out at 0%, they're putting in at maybe 30 or 40%. So those are some strategies you can look at to use before retirement when it makes sense. So anytime you have a low income and what I mean by low income is income under about 20, $25,000 look to start pulling a bit of money out of your RSP. It might make sense. Meet with your accountant or financial planner to see if that strategy would make the most sense for you. But we've done it for many clients. It makes a lot of sense. We've done it myself personally with me and my spouse. Create some tax strategies around pulling money out in a low tax bracket and kind of putting it back in on the other side in a higher tax bracket. When looking at pulling money out of an RSP when you get closer to retirement, or maybe you've retired and your spouse is still working. So I'm gonna give you an example of a client we're working with right now. Uh, she's a few years older than he is. She's retired. He's still working a good six figure income. She has about $50,000 in an RSP that she's built up over the years. So we ran a bunch of numbers in our software and we determined that it actually makes sense for her to redeem money. He's gonna work for about three or four more years. Her only income is CPP and OAS. She has no other income sources. So she's in a basically a zero tax rate. Um, so we're looking to redeem her RSP out over the next three, four, five years. Um, again, she's at a zero tax rate. She's 65 this year. So we're actually going to convert from an RSP to a RIF, pull $10,000 a year out of her RIF. She's gonna be able to use the income tax credit that we talked about earlier, the pension income tax credit. Um, and that $10,000 added with her CPP and OAS puts her at total tax owing of around $300 with the pension income tax credit that's gonna wipe that out. So there's gonna be zero tax owing. So for her to pull that money out of her RSP, which will essentially be a RIF now, makes a whole lot of sense. You know, she can get that money out tax-free. They can use it to maybe pay down their mortgage, to save in other areas. If they haven't used their TFSA, they have in this case, but maybe you haven't used your TFSA. So you can move money out of your RSP, essentially into your TFSA, tax-free. So that's one strategy that a lot of people watching this video could use. So again, if you're retired, you have very low to little income, look to redeem your RSP a lot faster than maybe you would think to do otherwise. Move it into your TFSA, let it go grow tax deferred and tax-free moving forward, and just creates way more flexibility for income stream down the road. So when, for our certain client, we plug those numbers into our software, by redeeming that $50,000 over the next four to five years out of her RSP, using that money to pay down a bit of the mortgage, get that cleared off, 
it actually added about $9,000 of additional income throughout their retirement. So, you know, that little, you know, change or that little redemption over the next few years creates thousands of dollars in value over time. So, you know, sometimes these small little things don't seem like a lot, but they can really add up over time. So make sure you look at redeeming that RSP out earlier if you can. Again, if you're 65, make sure you convert it to a RIF first to take advantage of that pension income tax credit. Um, but again, whether you're you know far away from retirement and maybe you have little to no income because you're raising kids or something like that, you lost your job, if you have a year of little to no income, look to take out some RSP now in a zero to very low percent tax bracket and move that money to a TFSA. You wanna keep it growing for your retirement savings, but maybe you can do it more tax efficiently in a different uh, stream, like a tax-free savings account. If you're already retired and you have very little income, maybe your spouse is still working, whatever the situation is, again, look to rip that out a bit faster than you would otherwise, because you may fall into you know, a zero or a very, very low tax bracket and very low taxes will be due. So again, we've done that for our client. It's gonna put about $9,000 back in their pocket. The $10,000 we're gonna redeem out every year out of the RIF, we're doing it in two withdrawals. So there's only a 10% withholding tax on that amount um, above the minimum amount that she's gonna have to do for the year. So hopefully that gives you a better idea on kind of how to pull money out or when to pull money out before retirement or maybe you're early into retirement and just with a low income tax bracket. So take a look at that. Make sure to utilize your tax brackets. We'll put a link below to tax brackets throughout every province and territory in Canada and find yourself in that tax bracket. And if you're in a low tax bracket, talk to your accountant or financial planner to see if it makes sense to maybe decumulate your RSP or your RIF account a lot faster than you thought you would otherwise. Thanks so much for joining us today on this video. Again, these small little tips and tricks can really add up to thousands, possibly tens of thousands of dollars in extra income and tax savings over time. Uh, so you may look and say, ah, it's not gonna do a whole lot for me. Trust me, even for our client, you know, $10,000 a year, it's gonna put 9,000 extra of income in their pocket over their lifetime. So it, it, you know, it really does add up. So, you know, small incremental changes can mean big numbers for you in retirement. So take action, talk to your accountant or financial planner to see if it makes sense for you and how you can implement some of these strategies into your retirement plan.